Yo, what is up everybody? Jumping here. Today I'm going to be showing you guys my Skyrim build. A lot of people request this, so I decided to go ahead and make a video for you guys because I love you. Now, this build is really awesome. It's a lot of fun. This is an Elemental Fury dual dagger build. You can also use a sword on your right hand and a dagger on your left hand, and that works really well if you want to try that out because the power attacks with that combo is really insanely fast. But basically, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using two daggers, I'm going to be dual wielding them, and I'm going to be using the shout called Elemental Fury. Now, for some reason, I guess not a lot of people know about it because I always have people coming into my live streams and ask me, how are you attacking so fast? Is this a mod or something? But no, there's a shout in the game. It's called Elemental Fury, and it will boost your attack speed while using non-enchanted weapons. And this is one of the best shouts in the game. It could be the best. In my opinion, it is the best. But some people might have a different opinion, and that's fine. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys uh, the short version of this build, and then I'm going to go into the more in-depth stuff as well. Now, the first thing you need to know about is my weapon. I'm using the Vladry's Lucky Dagger. I hope I'm saying that right, but that is Norwegian, so I could be wrong. Now, this dagger is actually really cool because it has effect on it, but it doesn't actually count as an enchantment. There's some weapons in the game. They will have like an effect on them, but they're not actually enchanted. So that is something to keep in mind, and this is one of them. Now, this is a really awesome steel dagger. It has a 25% chance of a critical hit, and you can combine this with a perk that you can get in the one-handed tree, and you can have a 45% chance of a critical hit. So you get a ton of critical hits with this dagger. Now, if you want to know, like, how do you get this dagger? It's going to come from a cave. Actually, it's more of a, like, a little tiny mini quest. But here is the Lady Stone. This is southwest of Whiterun. And it's going to be north of Falkreach. And basically, once you find this Lady Stone, you need to go west of there. And it's going to be the Moss Mother Cavern. There's going to be a guy outside and you can talk to him. You have to heal him. And then you have to go and clear the cave. And as a reward, you get this dagger. And like I said, this dagger is really awesome. I like it a lot. It's my favorite dagger in the game. And that's what I use for my build. Now, the next thing you're going to need to know is you're going to need to know what do you have to get to actually make this work really, really well? Because you could just get Elemental Fury and Dual Wield Daggers, and you're pretty much good to go. But in my opinion, you also want Dragon's Aspect. This is a really awesome shout. You get it from the Dragonborn DLC. Two of the words are going to come from the main storyline. So as long as you're just playing through the main storyline of the Dragonborn DLC, you should get two of the words. The final word, from what I remember, I could be wrong comes from the mine in Raven Rock. Raven Rock is the first town in the Dragonborn DLC, and there is a mine there. If you go there, there's going to be a side quest, and if you're doing the side quest, well, then you should find the final word for Dragon's Aspect. And that is the most important word, is the final word. Because once you have all the words unlocked, the final word is going to give you a buff to your shouts. It's a 20% power buff to shouts, and a 20% cooldown buff. So this is going to affect all the shouts in the game, including Elemental Fury. Now, if you want to know how to get Elemental Fury, all three words, I will quickly show you. It's actually fairly easy to get these words, unlike some other shouts. So if you go to Solitude, the first word is going to be West of Solitude at this Daedric Shrine. It's going to be outside on a word wall, so make sure to pick up the word outside the Daedric Shrine. And the next word is going to come southwest of that Daedric Shrine. It's Dragon Tooth Crater. This is where a dragon is, and it will be on a word wall. This is also northeast of Markroth. Now, the final word is going to come close to Falk Reach, and it's going to be north of that. It's right here. This is probably the most confusing aspect of the words, because when you're in here, there's going to be like a vampire, and then you'll get to the end, and you might get confused. There's going to be a staircase. Once you clear the vampire and you're past that part, there's a staircase. And after that, like very quickly after that, you will find the word wall with the word. And that's pretty much it. Those are the three words for Elemental Fury. So let me go ahead and show off what this build can do. So basically, we're going to go ahead and cast Elemental Fury now. And I'm dueling daggers. And you will swing 
so fast. It's unbelievable. Here's my left-handed attacks. I mean, you look ridiculous, to be quite honest, when you're swinging like this. But it's a lot of fun. And when people see this, like if you show this to your friends, they'll say, holy shit, what is that? And the way I have my build actually set up right now, I can actually like have the buff of Elemental Fury. And by the time it wears off, like it just wore off right there, maybe like three seconds after that, I can recast it. And that's going to come from a combination of a couple things. One of the things is Dragon's Aspect. And another thing is going to be an Amulet of Talos and the Blessing of Talos that you will get at a Talos Altar. So the Amulet gives you 20% cooldown. The Blessing, I believe, gives you a 10% cooldown. And Dragon's Aspect will give you like a 20% cooldown. So overall, you get about a 50% cooldown and it helps a lot. Now, the most annoying aspect of Dragon's Aspect well, that's kind of funny. I just said that, but it's true. The worst thing about Dragon's Aspect is pretty much that you can only use it once per day. So it does last a long time, though. If you're going to go and do any type of like longer dungeon, this will last the entire time you're doing the dungeon. There's no doubt about it. It lasts a long time. But if you're just going from one place to another fast traveling a lot, you're really going to not want to use Dragon's Aspect because you go from one place to another place and then you have to wait 24 hours it can get annoying but any longer dungeon in the game i definitely recommend using dragon's aspect to make this build so much better because that cooldown is really nice and also it makes you attack faster it actually does it's really really cool now in terms of like perks and stuff it's very simple all you really need is just one perk at level 51 handed you want to get both of the perks into dual fury this will make you attack 35% faster. And that's pretty much it. You can also get this perk later on to get better power attacks. But the dagger power attacks are kind of slow. They don't actually benefit much from Elemental Fury. And also Bladesman is good because of the dagger I'm using, the Lucky Dagger. This will make it so that I have a 45% chance of getting a critical hit. And that's really cool. Let me show you the power attack. Now the power attacks are extremely strong. I mean, it's definitely the strongest power attack in the game is the dual dagger power attack. But sadly, like I said, it doesn't actually benefit from Elemental Fury. Unlike maybe a sword and a dagger, try out a sword and a dagger and then do the power attacks. You can do a power attack like in a half of a second. It's freaking insane. Alrighty guys, now here's the deal. Now that we have all the simple stuff out of the way, now we can get into the more advanced stuff because this is a build video. So I need to actually talk about a couple other things that are, are important because this relates to my build. But this is something that's not necessary. If you don't want to do this, by all means, you don't have to. You get the idea, Dual Dagger, Elemental Fury, Dragon's Aspect, Amulet of Talos, Blessing of Talos. That's uh, pretty much the build that I'm using right now. And also make sure you have dual fury from the one-handed tree. That's the simple version of the build. Now it's time to get into the necromage version of the build. Because the necromage version of the build is so much better, guys. It's absolutely insane what necromage does. Now, here's the deal. There's a perk in the game. It's called necromage. It comes from restoration. Restoration might be a pain in the butt to level up. A lot of people ask me all the time, how do you level up Restoration? There is an easy way to do it, guys. If you go to the College of Winterhold and you start doing the quest line, eventually you're going to get a quest called the Staff of Magnus. They need you to go to a place called Labyrinthium. Now, inside Labyrinthium, if you explore, you should be able to find a spell called Equilibrium. What the spell does is that it's going to lower your health to recharge your magic. So, you can go ahead and lower your health using the spell and heal yourself with a restoration spell. I would recommend making some armor to fortify restoration to lower the cost of it. And then sit there and use closed wounds, our grand healing, our fast healing, whatever it might be, to level up restoration. And it does go up fairly quickly when you do that. Once you have a 70 restoration, you're going to want to get the perk Necromage. This is the best perk in the game. Now, is this an exploit or a glitch? Maybe, but to me it's legit. Why? Because it's a fucking perk in the game. I mean, you can just grab the perk and there you go. That is the exploit. You need to get the perk and then become a vampire. Now you can become a vampire lord or a normal vampire. It really doesn't matter. But once you are a vampire and you have this perk necromage, things are going to get crazy. Now if you read the spell, it says all spells are more effective against undead. 
But for whatever reason, when you're a vampire, you are counted as undead. So because you are undead, it gives you a 25% bonus to pretty much everything in the game. All active effects, all spells, all shouts. It's really, really nice, guys. So I definitely recommend getting Necromage and being a vampire for this build, at least for a while. After a while, you can go ahead and heal the vampire, get rid of it, and then you can still have a lot of really cool bonuses if you become a Necromage vampire. Now, the first thing I'm going to show you guys is what it does. So let me go ahead and show you a piece of armor. In fact, as I'm doing this, I will actually show you like what my effects are right now because... Some of my effects are different, but I never really go for anything that is like too overpowered. A lot of it is going to be stamina regeneration, sneaking, you know, maybe bows do a little bit more damage. It doesn't actually benefit me for my dual dagger build. Lock picking is easier. You know, I don't really like to fortify my damage to be way too crazy. Maybe a little bit for my bow because the bow, if I do use it, I like to do a good amount of damage with my bow. But that's it. I also have like this stuff, but... To deal with the one-handed stuff, it doesn't actually affect the daggers. If you're using a sword, though, this will affect the sword. So just keep that in mind. If you guys really want to, you can make your sword like one-shot everything, especially with Necromage Vampire because this stuff does some crazy crap. Okay, so let me go ahead and give you an idea on what this does. So I'm going to look up my active effects right now. I'm going to look up side boob. Any of them are fine because you got to see what they do. Like, for example, Fortify Sneak. Okay, like instead of 57% is what it said, right? 57% is what it said on the armor. Lock picking as well was 57%, but it's actually 71% because of Necromage. Remember, this will give me a 25% boost to that 57%. And I guess the overall result is 71%. So that's what Necromage does. Now, what you can do with this is you can make some crafting armor. And you can actually achieve the highest somewhat glitched but not like crazy glitched um, number in the game which is 35 percent this is the highest number like you can get in the game and that's going to be using necromage vampire and the Falmore's helmet glitch you need an older version of the Falmore helmet there is a newer version called the hardened helmet you do not want that version you want the older vanilla game version called the Falmore helmet basically once you have this helmet you can equip this and a crown at the same time. So you want to put Create Potion or Fortify Alchemy on both of these pieces right here. And then you want a chest piece for smithing, gauntlets for smithing and creating potions. And you also want a ring for smithing and creating potions and a necklace to do the same. Now, if you want the 35% number, you have to use the Helmet Glitch, Necromage Vampire, and you also have to find this armor in the Dragonborn DLC. There is a place, it's east of Raven Rock. There's a quest called Unearthed. You guys can look it up if you want. But once you complete the quest, you're going to get a whole bunch of this armor. And the boots are going to give you a plus 10 enchanting if you're wearing four pieces of the armor. So this is actually going to help because once you actually use a fortify like enchanting potion and you have this on... You can achieve a 170 enchanting and that will allow you to make smithing or crafting armor that is going to go ahead and give you that 35%. Now if I was to go ahead and equip these, you guys can see like what it does. Remember, it says it's only 35%, but with Necromage, it's going to go ahead and boost that to 43%. So this will allow me to smith like my weapons to be really 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 powerful it's going to allow me to put enchantments that are extremely powerful on my armor if i want to also let me use a potion of fortify smithing this will also like be kind of crazy let's go ahead and find that it was 191 percent but because of necromage vampire i will get a 238 percent bonus to that so as you can see i mean this is pretty crazy stuff that you can do but it is simple. All you got to do is be a vampire and get the perk Necromage. That's not hard, right? Now, the next thing I want to show you guys is 100% spell absorption. Now, to achieve this, you're going to need 100 alteration. This is important. Alteration is not hard to level up. If you go ahead and make some armor that will fortify alteration, you will lower the cost down to nothing. I always carry this armor on me. I have a set of armor 
that will allow me to train. I call it training because I just use it to level up magic and all that type of good stuff. But as you can see, I can lower my alteration costs by 100%. Now the thing is, is that there's a spell in alteration. Unfortunately, you need to have like a 50 alteration if you want to buy this spell. You can find it in a couple different places. There is one place, or there's a couple different places that it is guaranteed. You can look up the spell, telekinesis, guaranteed places to get it, and you can find it. But here's the deal. Once you have this spell, all you got to do is drop a piece of armor on the ground, reduce the cost of alteration by 100%, pick up the piece of armor, and just hold it there. And you can walk away, make a sandwich, go jerk off, whatever it might be, and then come back, and you'll have probably 100 alteration. Once you have 100 alteration... You're going to want to get this perk. It's called Atronach. Now, I am hoping I'm saying this right, because last time I said this, everybody made fun of me, which was cool. I didn't really care. But the point was is that, you know, I just was having trouble pronouncing it. So I'm hoping I'm saying it right now, Atronach, because I even looked it up just to go and double check and make sure that this is the way you're supposed to pronounce it. But what this does is that it gives you a 30% spell absorption, okay? Now, you have to understand, magic resistance and spell absorption is two different things. Magic resistance will make you resist magic and take less damage from it. Magic absorption will make you absorb it and take no damage from it. And also, you will recharge your magic. And it's really, really, really crazy. Okay, so, because of Necromage Vampire, you're going to actually get a bonus to this of 37.5%. Now, the important thing is, you have to be... A necromage vampire before you go for this so if let's say you already have this for some reason all you gotta do is beat the dragonborn dlc and at the end you can reset your skills and it will cost you one dragon soul for every reset so what i recommend to do is once you have the necromage vampire just go and reset all your skills besides maybe restoration because you don't want to reset necromage and then you just reapply all the perks because just like with this, this will give you a bonus of 37.5% with Necromage, although it says 30%, it's going to be the same way with certain things. And let me give you a great example of one that will get buffed. Dual Fury. This is going to get buffed by 25%. So if you are using the vanilla normal version of this build, you might notice you're not attacking as fast as I am. The reason is, is because I went for this perk when I was a Necromage Vampire. And all I did was I went after the Dragonborn DLC, I reset my one-handed, and I went ahead and I got this perk, and it got boosted. And that works for, like, a lot of things in the game. Archery is the same way. Like, you can get, instead of a 50% stagger, a 62% stagger. And for this, it's 37.5% for your draw speed instead of 30%. So there's a lot of crazy stuff that you can do with Necromage Vampire. But the spell absorption is one of the best because having that 37.5% means that you can easily get 100% and all you gotta do to get the 100% spell absorption is to go ahead and get the Standing Stone that has the same name, the Atronaut Standing Stone. Basically, this is going to give you a 50% spell absorption but with Necromage Vampire, this is going to give you 62.5% spell absorption. So if you do the math, that is 100% spell absorption. Now, once you actually achieve the 100% spell absorption, you will absorb every type of magic in the game. Not just like normal spells and stuff. You will absorb dragon, fire breath. You will absorb poisons. You will absorb enchantments on weapons. You will absorb shouts. The only shout that will work for some reason is Drain Vitality, but every other shout, if somebody will hit you with that shout or an enemy or something, you will just absorb the shout. It's really crazy. Like, spell absorption is absolutely awesome. And that's another thing. When people see me not taking any damage from magic, they immediately think I'm modding. But I have 100% spell absorption, and that comes from Necromage Vampire, the Atronaut Stone, and the Atronaut Perk. Those two combined will give you 100% spell absorption. And even if you're doing it legitly without Necromage, 80% spell absorption is still extremely good. You will barely ever actually be affected by anything magical because the chance of you resisting it or absorbing it is so much higher. 
Okay, guys, well, I did forget to show something, and that is where to find the Atronox Stone. If you want to find it, it's going to be directly south of Windhelm. So if you just go south, you should have no trouble finding this if you want the 100% spell absorption. Now, one thing I forgot to mention, which is something I'm sure some people might actually ask, what if you don't want to play as a vampire? Let's say you want to do the Necromage Vampire thing just to get the buffs, but then afterwards you don't want to be a vampire anymore. That's actually totally okay. As long as you get certain things when you are a Necromage Vampire, those things will be permanent. For example, like if you go for the Atronaut perk in the Alteration Tree and you make it 37.5%, that will stay at 37.5% for pretty much forever unless you reset the skill back down to 15 by using the legendary option or if you go to the end of the Dragonborn DLC and you reset it. Then if you reapplied it when you're not a vampire, you will not get that 37.5%. You will only get 30%. But as long as you were a Necromage Vampire when you did apply it, you are okay. And that goes for everything in all these perks. So if you're going to do what I said and go and reset all your perks and get the better bonus, so instead of 35%, we're going to get a bigger bonus for Dual Fury, you will keep that forever. You don't have to worry about that getting messed up if you cure your vampire. So that is perfectly okay. Same with 100% spell absorption. The only thing about that though is you cannot get rid of the stone. If you are not a vampire and you get rid of the stone and then you reapply the stone, it will only be 50% and not 62.5%. So that is something to consider. Once I get rid of my vampire disease, I'm never going to change my stone again. So that's pretty much it. And that also goes with all of these active effects I have. Any bonus ones from quests or just random like buffs that you get from just doing certain things in the game. Those will actually stay on forever. As long as I applied them when I was a necromage vampire, they will all be buffed forever. So that is something to also consider. Now, let me go ahead and talk about my armor real quick because you got to see the effects on my armor. But I'm sure a lot of people are going to say, yo, I really like your armor. Because the Ancient Nord armor, that's what I'm wearing, is a really cool set, especially for females. Now, for males, I don't personally like it. But for females, I think it's one of the best heavy armors in the game. If you want to know how to get the armor, there's two ways of getting it really easy. You can get it in Whiterun by crafting it at the Sky Forge. Now you have to complete the Companions quest line to be able to do this. Then you have to go to the Sky Forge and you have to look under the Daedric option and you should be able to craft the Ancient Nord armor. But there's even an easier way to get it than that. A little bit south of Riften is going to be this tomb right here. So here's Riften and here's the tomb. And this is going to be a little bit west of Fort Dawnguard. Now in this tomb, you're going to find some ghosts. And if you kill them and you get their loot, they're going to be carrying Ancient Nord armor. So you can get a full set of it easily by just coming here. And there's a lot of ghosts and they all have it. So you can get multiple sets of it. And you know you're in the right place if you find a guy outside. He's like a spy and he's going to give you a side quest to do. That is the right place. So that is the easiest way to get the Ancient Nord armor if you want my armor. If you want the Jagged Crown, that's a little bit more complicated. I'm going to try to explain this as best as I can. Now everybody should know that when you start the game, you have to choose between the Imperials or the Stormcloaks at the beginning. Now it really doesn't affect anything, but let's say that you chose the Stormcloaks and you were leaving Helga with the Stormcloak guy. Well, unfortunately, if you want to keep the Jagged Crown, you're going to have to stick with the Stormcloaks. You cannot say, okay, I want to do the Imperial quest line for the Civil War. And that is vice versa. If you left with the Imperial guy, you have to choose the Imperials if you want to keep the crown. Because the very first quest in the Civil War, once you have chosen a side, will be the Jagged Crown quest. And this item is a quest item, and you're supposed to give it to someone. And then once you give it away, that's it. You'll never see it again. But what you can do is, as long as you, let's say, stick with the Stormcloaks, and you left Helga with the Stormcloak guy, and now you've joined the army, that guy that you left with on either side will be there with you, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to take the Jagged Crown, once you have it as a quest item, and you're going to reverse pickpocket it to that person, okay? Now, reverse pickpocketing is when you put something on them by pickpocketing it on them. And it should be almost a guaranteed chance to do it. Now, once you do that, you go and you turn the quest in. 
then you find that person and you just pickpocket it right back off of them and now you'll have the crown forever so that is the way to keep the crown and by the way the crown is definitely the coolest helmet in the game in my opinion i am the motherfucking dragonborn and i have a goddamn dragon's crown that is freaking sick it's the best for a male or a female in my opinion Alrighty guys, well that's basically everything. I really hope this has helped. If it has, will you please like my video for me, be sure to subscribe, and I really do hope that everyone has a very nice day, and peace out.